Hi guys, welcome back to Bremet Lectures. In this video, we're going to cover hypoglycemia. Let's first begin with the signs and symptoms for these patients. Remember that uh, several people may not develop hypoglycemic signs and symptoms until they reach levels as low as 20 milligrams per deciliter to 30 milligrams per deciliter. Remember that these signs and symptoms are in regards to two responses. The first one is the increased epinephrine secretion. Patient may develop uh, epinephrine responses such as sweating, tremor, tachycardia, and anxiety. And also the other part of the symptoms are going to be in regards to the depression of the central nervous system. Remember that patients uh, may develop dizziness, headache, clouding vision, uh, confusion, seizures, and may develop coma, and eventually uh, they may die. So the importance of these uh, hypoglycemic episodes is that they have a high mortality rate. And so if you identify a patient that has a similar uh, clinical picture, then you should perform glucose level measurements and uh, replace immediately the glucose that they are lacking. In regards to etiology, we have several mechanisms. The first ones are going to be the patients that develop postprandial hypoglycemia. These are patients considered to have a reactive response. And for example, we have the newborn patient that recently uh, received breast milk and they develop the clinical findings of hypoglycemia, then you should suspect galactosemia. Remember, these patients have a lack of uridyl transferase and so they cannot uh, metabolize galactose and that may unfold as hypoglycemic episodes. Another situation are patients that develop uh, hyperinsulinism, and these patients are usually um, patients that underwent gastric procedures such as gastrectomy, pyloroplasty, or vagotomy, and uh, these patients require strict dietary management in order for them to avoid rapid gastric emptying and development of these uh, syndromes. And we also have the patients that develop hypoglycemic episodes during fasting. For these, you should consider hormonal deficiencies such as hypopituitarism. These are the patients that lack uh, growth hormone, ACTH. And so these patients are not able to keep up with glucose demands. Also, um, adrenal insufficiency patients, they cannot develop a proper response during stress episodes due to the lack of cortisol. Consider also enzymatic deficiencies such as uh, von Gerke's disease, Cori disease, McCardle disease, particularly the glucose metabolism enzymatic defects. And of course, substrate deficiency, patients that have malnutrition may develop hypoglycemia. Liver diseases, if they are um, at an advanced stage, they also may develop hypoglycemia because the liver is an important organ for gluconeogenesis and for glycogen storage. And of course, we have uh, drugs with the potential to develop hypoglycemic episodes, such as alcohol. Remember that this one blocks the gluconeogenesis. Uh, Propranolol and other non cardioselective beta blockers, what they develop is a blockade of the glycogenolysis in the liver. And importantly, these medications mask the clinical findings of hypoglycemia. And so you should avoid these medications in patients prone to develop hypoglycemia, such as diabetic patients that receive insulin injections or sulfonylureas. And uh, salicylates are described to increase insulin secretion as their most important mechanism for hypoglycemia development. Of course, there's other mechanisms, but this is the most important one. And lastly, it's going to be for the um, hyperinsulinism patients. The first one is going to be insulinomas. Remember that these are beta cell tumors. And so what they do is they uh, secrete insulin. For the diagnosis, of course, your hypoglycemia, increased plasmatic insulin with uh, levels not reaching more than uh, 200 microunits. Of course, an increase of the C-peptide. Remember that this is an endogenous etiology, and so uh, the pancreatic tumor is generating this C-peptide also as it is generating insulin. What you should perform is a CT scan, ultrasound, or arteriography to identify the tumor. And of course, the treatment is going to be surgical resection and diet for these patients. The other etiologies are going to be exogenous insulin administration and sulfonylureas. 
So these are most commonly seen in patients uh, related to the healthcare system or patients that have access to these medications, such as diabetic patients. For exogenous insulin, the diagnosis is, of course, a patient that has hypoglycemia, a super increased plasmatic insulin uh, with levels higher than a thousand uh, microunits usually, and of course, a decreased C peptide because this one is exogenous insulin administration and the pancreas is not um, generating this insulin, so the C peptide is going to be. Uh, down and of course the treatment for these patients is replace glucose and address if this is a factitious disorder and for sulfonylureas uh, the same your diagnosis you have a hypoglycemic patient that has an increased plasmatic insulin but in this one you're going to see that the CIP peptide is increased because it is the pancreas that is secreting this insulin due to the, sulfonyl the sulfonylureas action and of course, measure sulfonylureas either in blood or urine for your diagnosis. For the treatment, the same, uh, replace glucose and of course address if this is a factitious disorder.